Hello, my name is Leonid Koren. I'm a principal of SQL Solutions Architect here at AWS. This short video will focus on DynamDB feature of eBody and Data from Amazon S3. I will describe the feature, go over things that should be taken into consideration, the best practices of eBody and Data from S3, and will finally show a demo of the feature. So let's get started. Import from S3 is a serverless feature that doesn't require writing any code or managing any infrastructure in order to import data to a DynamoDB table. Important to note that today the feature only allows importing data into a new DynamoDB table. The main use cases for this feature include any bulk import that you would like to perform into a new DynamoDB table, or an ETL job where you will export data from one source, transform it on S3, and then import to DynamoDB. For example, in such a scenario, the source of the data may be an existing DynamoDB table if you would like to restructure it or add additional attributes before importing to a new table. Other such scenarios are one-time copying of DynamoDB table across accounts or a migration to DynamoDB. Keep in mind that the data import doesn't consume any write capacity from the table and in the vast majority of cases, it is the most cost-efficient option for importing large quantities of data into DynamoDB. You can import data that is stored in either CSV, DynamoDB JSON, or Amazon ION formats. The only table attributes that you define as part of the import job are the primary keys of the table and of the global secondary indexes. So keep in mind that if using CSV as the input format, where the input does not contain column types, any non-key attributes will be imported as strings. The input data can be compressed with Z standard GZIP or to be left uncompressed. Data can be imported from an S3 bucket in a different account and to a DynamoDB table in a different region. The only requirement is that the AWS role used for the process has the required permissions. Now let's speak about import job errors handling. Import errors are locked to CloudWatch. For example, such an error may be a record that doesn't include a value for the table's partition key. It is always recommended reviewing the import job logs during the job run and after its completion. Note that once 10,000 errors were counted, the job stops logging additional errors in CloudWatch, but it will still continue importing the remaining source data. This is something that you should be aware of when reviewing the job's errors in CloudWatch. Also keep in mind that the DynamoDB table's primary key is unique so if there are multiple records in the input objects containing the same primary key values, these records will overwrite each other during the input in a random order. This isn't considered to be an error by the input job. As mentioned, in the vast majority of cases, import from S3 is the most cost-efficient option for importing large quantities of data into DynamoDB. Data import is charged based on the size of the uncompressed data on S3. Keep in mind that if during the input process you create global secondary indexes for the table, writes to those indexes are made for free, which makes the input process even more cost efficient. There are several best practices to keep in mind in order to achieve optimal results and optimal input times. The first is that when importing data, you want to make sure that the input objects are not sorted based on the DynamoDB table's partition key since in such a case, the import would lead to rolling hot partitions in the DynamoDB table and much longer import times. Such a situation may occur if, for example, the source data was exported from a database through a scan. If indeed the source data is sorted, you should randomize it in a prior to importing the data. Note that if the source data was generated by the export to a 3 feature of DynamoDB, for example, in order to copy a table to a different account, then the table is always exported from DynamoDB in a random fashion. So you don't need to worry about such a scenario. Note that data is imported concurrently by hundreds of executors in order to achieve high throughput. So with large quantities of data, you should always divide the source data to multiple objects. The optimal object size for achieving maximum throughput is around three gigabytes of uncompressed data. You should also keep in mind the regional limits for total size of data that can be imported in a single job and the total number of objects. 
If you are hitting these limits, you can compress the data or combine multiple objects into one. I will now demonstrate the process of importing data from S3. While I show the process from the DynamoDB console, the same can be performed from the AWS CLI and the AWS SDKs. Here I am within the AWS Management Console and specifically within the DynamoDB Management Console in my AWS account. So now I will click on Imports from S3. In this page, I can see the previously executed import jobs. So one of them completed already and one of them is importing at the moment. And I can create a new import from S3 job. So let's do that. Now I will enter here the location of my input objects. So in this case, I'm entering the location of the folder that contains all the objects that I want to import. I can choose whether that location is located within a bucket in my AWS account or a different AWS account. I will choose my AWS account. Then I can choose what is the compression used on the input files. So whether that's files that are not compressed or compressed with any of the supported compression algorithms. I'm choosing no compression because the objects in this case are not compressed and the objects in this case are CSV, so I'm choosing CSV. And now I can also choose whether the input files contain the first line as the uh, header line, or if not, then I should define how the header looks like, how the columns in the files look like. So in my case, the first line is the header, so I'm choosing that. I can also choose the separator. In my case, it's the default one, comma, so I'm clicking next. Now I will create here a new table called, let's call it import demo. And I must choose the partition key for my table. So in this case, the data set is a data set that contains ratings of, of different movies. So uh, I will choose one of, the, um, one of the columns there called user ID as my partition key. And uh, the type will be string. And the sort key that I will choose here is the rating uh, column. And here in this case, it is a number. I'm clicking next. And here I can choose the settings for my target table. I will choose the customized settings in order to be able to control the settings a little bit more. And here I can choose between provisioned and on-demand capacity mode for the table. For the sake of simplicity, I'm choosing on-demand capacity mode. You can see that I can also optionally create global secondary indexes as part of the input uh, process. I will not be creating indexes for this particular demo. I can continue with choosing the encryption uh, options for the table. And from here, I will be clicking Next. Now here, I can review all the chosen options and I can create the import job here. So I'm clicking on Import in order to create the job. And you can see that the new job just started. Now, in order not to wait, let's just review the output of a previous job, the previously completed job. So I'll click on the previously completed job. You can see here the location. In this case, I imported just one file, not, not a folder, but just one single object on S3. You can see the name of the table that I created back then. You can see how long this process took, uh, how much data was imported, and so on. So that's the type of information I can expect to see about an import job. And also, I have a link here to CloudWatch in order to review the uh, logs of the particular import job. So that was the short demo about the process of importing data from uh, S3 to DynamoDB. I remind you that similarly to how I did it here from the DynamoDB Management Console, I could do the same from the AWS CLI or from the different SDKs. Thank you for joining me for this video about importing data from S3 to DynamoDB. I hope that you found the video beneficial and I invite you watching other videos in the DynamoDB Nuggets series.